Hello, I'm local democracy reporter Emma Draper, and I was at the Wind Farm meeting held at Arbury and Russian Parish Hall. You'll hear from MHK for the area Jason Morehouse, concerned residents, and commissioners from Michael, Chair Katrina Livingstone, and Carol Lillywhite. Manx Utilities did not send a representative, but it did provide a statement. But first, I spoke to Kiri Jenkins. It's been a fantastic turnout. I mean, far more than we thought. Um, and it's been interesting to hear from people not just in the constituency but in the south of the island that are going to be affected by this. I think the realisation has dawned that this is not just a local issue but an island-wide issue. And what do you think from the um, comments that I heard in the meeting today, do you feel like it will be resolved soon, like the issues between residents, the MUA and the Komen as well? No, I don't, because they are um, on all, firing on all cylinders to try and get this project rushed through by 2026, which is a Komen um, set deadline. Certainly from the freedom of information and stuff that we're getting back as a group, we can quite clearly see that there are officers that are expressing concern, um, that um, you know environmental impact assessments um, haven't been done, wind, I mean, you know, the first thing you would do with a wind farm is, is, you know, stick those anemometers up there and check that the wind conditions are going to be suitable. Um, it's quite shocking, really. And would you... Oh, I have a question, Emma, I've forgotten it. Oh, and you mentioned in there that about legislation that there's very little protection for residents. Is this something you want to see changed whilst this is ongoing? Absolutely. I think it's quite um, shocking to realise that the legislation program is not covering any of the legislation for wind farms. So no protection for residents, no control over the wind farms. The legislation is silent on how the MUA are going to control this. So where's the health and safety? Where's the, you know, the, the buffer zones? Where's the compensation for residents who are going to suffer from you know, the noise and the um, pollution and, the, and everything else that we've heard tonight from all these really concerned residents? And what would you like to see the MUA and Komen do? Would you like to see them back out of this idea and rethink? Or would you like to see a different solution to this problem? Transparency. That's what we're lacking here. So um, we've seen all the blurb that the MUA have put up on their um, website. A lot of it is, is being reactionary to our freedom of information requests. Um, there's been no direct um, consultation with any residents. I said this way back at the start. They're still claiming that they're speaking to hobbyists and residents. You heard them tonight. Nobody's been spoken to. Um, the environmental impact assessments, it's not just about the environment, it's about the community, about the effects on businesses, on homes, on recreation, on access. None of that ha has been done. Perfect. That's all my questions. If there's anything else I've missed off or you want to add on? One of the, one of the overriding concerns that came through the meeting tonight is about the costs. Um, Are you concerned about the impact of the cost on people? I'm more concerned about the taxpayer of the Isle of Man because in the freedom of information that came back from the MUA, it is clear that they've got real fiscal constraints over their budgets. We know that they've got a massive debt that they're servicing. It concerns me that the... Um, that the... Uh, the the wind farm site up there um, is being used as an income generation. It actually says that in the FOI. Um, and so, you know, are we looking at getting to net zero or are we looking at servicing the MUA's long-term debt? And is it the price that we, the public, have got to pay is for the environment as well as on our electricity bills? Because they have confirmed that our electricity bills will not come down. Yeah, huge numbers, um, probably 30 or 40 of them, and it's an ongoing thing, and they're so concerned, and they've gone into so much detail, and really considered the wider implications of what's going on. It's not simply a case of, it shouldn't be happening here, but it shouldn't be happening on the island. It's the wrong location, and there's so many questions over just the basic things, like how they're going to get the turbines there, the cost of it, all those core issues, they're just being ignored at the moment.
And you said in the meeting that you were going to be putting some questions and motions forward to Tim Ward. Would you be able to explain a little bit about what they might be? Yeah, of course. Um, I've put down about 15 written questions at the moment, and they're available on the Tim Ward website. And it goes through all kinds of things just in terms of the impact, the cost, um, where the landing stage will be, all the things that really came up tonight in terms of we've got a general piece of information but we haven't got the detail and it's so important that we actually have the detail because there's going to be nothing worse than a decision made by the MUA without people thinking the details have been considered, the details not there. So that's really the question. In terms of the motions, I've got two motions. The first one is actually looking at highland areas across the island and saying these are so important for the island in terms of daily life, in terms of the way people live, and in terms of the attractiveness and the biosphere status. And we need to protect those areas. So we're going to look at that. And the other one is just in terms of future developments. When they come along, it's important that the local people play a part in the initial discussions. We can't have something like we've had this evening, where people are sidelined, they have to come together and they have to send their ideas to the decision-making authority who will then potentially consider them. And it's an outrage in a way that in a small island we can't get representatives from the MUA to come along to listen to us, to talk to us this evening. You know, we're grown-ups and we deserve to be listened to. And are you in favour of renewable energy for the island? Oh, definitely. And that's one of the kind of key things that I'm bringing out in the questions. In terms of the location, why have you gone for this? It's not been previously identified. When was it identified? And why aren't we looking at sites closer to Douglas and Peel where we've got the infrastructure, we've got the sense of population? To actually take these wind turbines so far from the coast is costing a small fortune. And in terms of their productivity, it's going to be insignificantly different from placing them on the coast, which would have so little impact compared with where they would be if this plan goes ahead. I'm not an engineer, but uh, as a scientist, I get involved in reviewing big proposals, and certainly I've come across big proposals that involve energy distribution. And that's one question I was hoping to get in, because I'm not sure whether this has all been worked out, but it's non-trivial taking a set of wind turbines, taking the energy from them, taking them to the distribution point, storing the energy, and maybe it's all been worked out but it's non-trivial and there are multiple ways of doing it. So that's a concern I have. And then of course, the visual impact of distribution lines, that's an issue. But I think a really important thing I say as a scientist is that science is advanced because as scientists, we have ideas about the field we're studying, we have theories, we go into a laboratory, we do experiments and we find we're wrong. So we rethink our theories. So in any advance, we need to take as much information as possible and learn from that. Tonight, we learned a lot of new things. Or I learned some fascinating things, and I'm sure many of you, I think you did too. And we need to take that knowledge and make the best decisions. I mean, right from the start, is our wind turbines on land the best solution for the Isle of Man? I'm a great supporter of green energy, but there are various ways of doing it. I'm not convinced that this is the best. I'm also very concerned about the visual impact and the impact of trying to move these giant turbines through the countryside. It's going to mean demolishing houses, building new roads, very expensive infrastructure. And once the wind farm is established, it will grow. Start with three turbines, then there'll be six, then there'll be 20. And the impact of that is very serious. And of course, it's not a continuous sort of energy. When the wind dies down, it doesn't produce energy. So you have to store it. Storing energy is difficult, expensive, and inefficient, and dangerous in some cases. Uh, I'm extremely concerned as a local resident for this preferred site, but I'm also extremely concerned, full stop, about the whole way in which we've arrived at this proposal, and particularly the speed with which the government is trying to proceed. Because even the MUA, in their documentation that we can see, is clearly slightly nervous about the uncertainties of this massively expensive development, uh, something that the government is not noted for ever delivering on, on, on time or in the, in the budget given. So what we've got is a rush for no good reason to bring our green energy online. 
Green energy actually is coming our way automatically if we choose to connect to it from the UK, where they can spread their risk everywhere. And through the interconnector system, which is used all the way through the UK and Europe, um, we can actually get perfectly good green energy, amount, proportion of green energy increasing without having to trash our countryside in terms of biodiversity, in terms of the landscape, in terms of the tourist potential of the island. All these things can be protected. If we want to go uh, quicker to green energy, the obvious solution, as many people at this meeting tonight have said, is to go offshore because the opportunities are right on our doorstep we can sign up to them, we can give an extra boost to green energy and we know that green energy will never be the core of our energy on the Isle of Man because it's not reliable on 100% 24-7 everyday business. So you, green energy is a great contributor but offshore is much, much more efficient than onshore by about 50% and it's on our doorstep and we're at the moment we're ignoring it. That is where we should be getting our wind energy from and yes, that's a good thing to do. It will also give us all sorts of seabed licences fees and all the rest of it. The other proposal is the Druidale Valley which is in Michael District and we're concerned that they might choose that as a site. We think it's as bad an idea in Druidale as it is in Iristane and the 2026 deadline is arbitrary and it doesn't make sense to rush and do something in three years that properly done would take two years for wind studies two years for bird studies, plus it's disheartening to hear that at the beginning of the process they will have to order wind turbines and spend money and that might commit you to going forward with something that turns out after studying to not be a good proposal. So we came tonight to support the people down here, express our concern that it not happen in Michael District any more than Arbury and Russian. And do you have the same concerns about the environmental impacts and the cost on the residents as well? Currently the planning strategy says that you are not allowed to put up anything vertical on the uplands, which is where Druidale and Salby is. The current all-island strategy in consultation is hoping to remove that, so we, we will lose the opportunity to be able to say this is not appropriate. Hen harriers are a red endangered species. Wind turbine farms are not suitable for birds. They don't understand the fact that if you avoid one, you, you might not meet another one. I've also concerned about the fact that it's quite a remote place Place, which means there's not a lot of property there but the actual site itself is a historic site there are historic monuments there and also there should be a value to our land the land and the beauty of the land has a value and that's being ignored at the moment in a statement chair of manx utilities tim crockle said it would not be appropriate to attend the public meeting because there is nothing further to add from a previous one held at the beginning of the month he also said he will go back and speak to Arbery and Russian commissioners when there is more information. The statement provided says one of the reasons for wanting to install a wind farm onshore is because a target has been set for decarbonising the island's electricity supply by 2030. The MUA has worked with consultants who, it says, believe wind farms align best with how electricity is used on the island and has the lowest cost to people because they can be publicly owned. Locations with higher wind speeds are in the southwest of the island and the MU says this area would maximise the amount of electricity that could be generated. It says as further assessments of the Erie Stain site are needed to fully understand the impact a wind farm could have there and on the surrounding area. Mr Crookle said Manx Utilities will continue to upload information to its website in the spirit of being open and transparent without compromising the public purse and Isle of Man government financial regulations. Thank you for making it to the end of the Little Manx Radio newscast. You are obviously someone with exquisite taste. May I politely suggest you might want to subscribe to this and a wide range of Manx Radio podcasts at your favourite podcast provider so our best bits will magically appear on your smartphone. Thank you. Thank you.